Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now, the button below. Make sure everybody is, uh, is uh, emailing for help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah and to, to ask how's everything and how are you doing and what are some of the difficulties. Also on the comments for the videos if you can log in from where you're logging in from so we can see all the different nationalities and the different cities and countries inshaAllah that are online. <coughs> this is one of the emails Sayyidi. Um, Sayyidi, I have questions about extraterrestrial life outside our planet. I'm aware there are naughty jinns that harass humans through witchcraft, jinn oppression and possession. What about the human friendly jinn? Could aliens and UFOs being seen around the world be the jinn kind, the good and the bad? Keep in mind, Shaykh, there are estimated between 100 to 400 billion stars in our galaxy in approximately 2 trillion galaxies and some of these beings travel in stellar, interstellar. They say there is roughly two planets to every star in our galaxy. So are these creation jinn kind or another creation? They're very advanced civilization, interdimensional beings coming from the fourth. <laughs> is and it a question or is this a manifesto? <laughs> it's not a question, it's this, a, this somebody's is an email. manifesto, yeah. This is an email. Yeah, I don't know. You got so long I, I got lost in that. A'udhu billahi min shaitani bismillahir rahmanir raheem. Alhamdulillah that Allah guiding us and Prophet love guiding us and illuminated the nation of Islam is an illuminated nation, never had dark ages. It came to illuminate this earth that was in a dark age. That knowledge sets you free. When Allah gave to us the knowledge of the jinn, they are of uh, electric beings, of fireless, a, a smokeless fire which is what? Is electricity. And from what they keep calling aliens because it's alien to them and they don't know what it is and they think it's coming on a ship from somewhere else and coming into their home and touching them by alien encounters. If they only knew and came to Islam they would know that there's a jinn community everywhere and they are ten times our population. They live amongst you and in your home and in your environment and there's nothing that you can do that make them leave that. They're everywhere through every layer. So of course they're molesting people, they're bothering people, night terrors upon people. If for one of them should decide that they want to attack insan, they come. And they come and when they hold that insan they feel that they can't breathe in their sleep and they call night terror, night attacks. All of these are jinn related and the tariqah comes to teach the energy and all the energy practices, why? Because it's the explanation of that world. Otherwise if somebody's not talking in energy it's a coded way to understand the jinn world because the jinn are energy. So what are you going to do to push away bad jinn? Wave, wave a, a stick and do something around? No, it's all based on energy. How you build your energy, how you develop your energy, how you call upon more energy is the madad. You're asking upon the madad of awliyaullah and those whom Allah is pleased with from Budala, Nujaba, Nuqab, Awtad, Wal Akhyar, Qawthun and Jinn wa Malaika. From all these categories of Rijalullah whom many of them are the jinn, are Rijalullah, are Allah's servants. That Allah says, I'm with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. From those categories are jinn and ins. And this is the best of company to keep. So when they teach you through energy that build your energy, build your tafakkur, build the muraqabah, build all the practices, you're actually surrounding yourself with a very strong energy field of very pious souls. That is the protection against nefarious beings. When you have no protection they're everywhere. They enter through every television show that you watch, they enter through every radio that you watch because everything produces an energy. 
You turn on the radio and it's All those bad words, I can't repeat those on video. Those words are manifesting these creatures. They're coming through the wire, through the speaker and entering into that environment. They're traveling through that sound. You turn on the scary movies, bad movies, horror movies, they're like a freeway coming in through your internet connection into your home. Now you have all these friends sitting there and they're looking at you, hey, and then they start to come after you and they're all over you and at night they come and attack you. That's somebody who has no energy understanding, no training, nothing that push them away. Their home and their life is a freeway to this dimension. Everything they listen and do are all these creatures coming through. Think of them in the millions coming into the home. Then imagine, of course then they're going to occupy the person, they're going to influence that person, they influence them to sin, influence them to do bad, influence them to harm themselves and others, have bad character, all of that because of that environment. So that's all energy based. You don't have to teach people in, in the West about jinn only because that's something maybe foreign but you teach based on energy. So somebody come and teach you now build your energy, call upon support, recite the madad in your house, perfume and fragrance your home to have a beatific smell like a masjid beautiful with fragrances, play dalal khirat because we said that things would be manifesting through sound. As soon as you play the dalal khirat in the home, the angels and mu'min jinn are coming to hear that salawat. That with every time and every praise that it's praising, Allah bringing very pious souls and beings to be there during the praising. So then the room becomes a masjid, the environment becomes a masjid of all pious souls. If you entered into the tariqah, that the shaykh is assigning from the mu'min beings to be accompanying you and living in your environment with you. As a result you not only have yourself and your family but you're also now housing other mu'min beings living with you. And that's why then they teach you with energy, then make sure that you are living according to an Islamic lifestyle, that be good, have good character. Make good fragrances for them because their families are in your home and in and that environment. Pray, call the azan, all of these actions make them happy. Play the salawat, play Holy Qur'an all the time, it makes them happy. When they're happy your energy and the home energy is beatific. You put the taweezes because they have a reality that Allah is sending upon the earth. Those realities then those are producing lights and realities. So then the house, the, the house, the home and the soul of these people become fortified with so much energy and so much lights that when they turn the TV on for any type of negativity, the negativity looks and shoots back out because it's like coming into the wrong place. It's going to have a very difficult time in that environment and it runs. Any negative energy coming from the streets and other environments or coming from the mall as you walk into your home, again it sees the light because you don't see the light. It sees the place of where you're living, if you're practicing what we just said, it sees that place is filled with light and they run before they enter into that. Some of the very stubborn ones may try to hide deep within insan. But eventually if they're doing those practices in that house those energies will produce and begin to burn these creatures out of that person. Anybody who's experienced an unwanted passenger begin to scream because it's going to scream as it comes out, it's being burned out. And that's by the zikr, by the energy. If you got something onto your body that is clinging to you that shouldn't be. By the time you sleep and you're from these students that do these practices, your soul is going to come out energized and begin to attack that creature that is, is trying to occupy. So many things are happening but if you teach at the level of energy everything makes more sense. Keep your wudu, keep all of these understandings of wudu that's all energy. 
So the more you build and take our way of building the energy, build your energy, build your practices, make your muraqabah, your energy field becomes very powerful. You're less likely to be hijacked. If you have no energy field, you don't do nothing, then consider yourself a bus that every homeless person is already on that bus with you. Not homeless person, homeless jinn, then they're just all over that person and making everything in their mind off and all their character off, inshaAllah. Masha you answered like three, four questions in There you go <laughs> um, <clears throat> As Alaikum Sayyidi, I find it hard to breathe during meditation when doing the second part of the daily awrad. What should I do? Please help me as Sayyidi. Hard to breathe? Yeah, during the meditation. Yeah. Then stop the meditation and finish the awrad so that you can finish the awrad if you're doing too deep of an energy and you're, you're not able to breathe through it then split it. Just stop meditating, finish your awrad and then put some salawats and then you can try to meditate with your breathing through that type of energy. But the main thing is to finish the, the awrad. The doing of the awrad doesn't have to be done in meditation, the two are separate issues. You do your awrad, Allah 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 Salawat Allahumma Salli Salli Muhammad Allahumma Salli Muhammad Allahumma Salli Salli Muhammad Allahumma Salli Muhammad You do the awrad and it's done. Meditation is you sit, put your salawats and then breathe and ask to be in the presence of Prophet breathing and bi zikrahu that the breath of who in, breath of who out. You can have a, a tasbih later and then connecting your heart and making a slow salawat, Allahumma Sayyidi Muhammad Ali Sayyidi Muhammad And then do khafi. Those are all the tafakkur and contemplation but the awrad do the awrad straight and finish it. Otherwise if your awrad's taking you four hours to do, of course you're not going to do it. The awrad is done in 20 minutes and it's finished. That way you're locked and that's your dial up, that's your connection with the tariqah. Visualize Shaykh Dagestani's face, get a beautiful picture, frame it with respect. These taweezes and pictures of the shaykhs, frame them as a sign of respect. Every other nobody you put a frame and then for the shaykhs you just throw it up there with a pin, it's not nice. Put it with a beautiful frame and put it nicely on the wall as a reminder. Shaykh Dagestani, Shaykh Nazim and then look at their faces and Ask in, in your contemplation that, Ya Rabbi I want to kunu ma sadiqeen. Your words are eternal and has nothing to do with dunya, that keep the company of pious servants, Ya Rabbi let me to keep their company, that their fire is to reach to me, inshaAllah. Well, this is from a new person from Pakistan, uh, Shaykh please guide me on how we can have barakah in our time. I'm from Pakistan. Pa Viva Pakistan! <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Everything that they're teaching Shaykh is to barakah, is for the barakah, salawats, the zikrs, the mawlid, all of these practices, the madad that we just talked about that has immense barakah because they, they describe that as soon as you want them call their name and as soon as you call their name they're coming and their nazar is upon you. They have immense blessings from Allah and they're waiting for someone to call upon their name and they'll send you that blessings. So every time you read the shajar and the silsila of the Naqshbandiya shaykhs you calling upon them and send me from your fires and send me from whatever good you have that Allah has bestowed upon you. You should be rained upon with immense barakah in your home, in the room of all the, the children, go from room to room reading your madad. And every day read the madad in the home, read the madad in your office, read the madad in your car, everywhere. And that it has an immense barakah, live a life of khidmat and service. When you're living a life just you make a lot of money, you just take care of yourself and you sleep for yourself, it doesn't have that joy in your heart. So they come into our lives and teach, live a life of khidmat that what did you do for yourself? Listening to zikr is a gift from Allah but what did you do of a service to them? 
Because then you can say, I'm in service in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad because these are ashiqeen, they're promoting and they're, they're not but a few fingers of them in the world that promote this immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad You can type, type something, you can write, write something. If you, can, if you can't do that then click on something, share something, do something to live a life of khidmat and to be of service. From what Allah gave you of your rizq, your sustenance, your ability, your skills, put it for the way of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> to propagate that. Then you feel so good, you work hard, you did everything and at night you sleep that I did my best for that day Ya Rabbi, grant me a good ajr, grant me to have tomorrow to even be better. And then every day you're getting now the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad onto your life. Because whatever you're doing is for Prophet So no doubt you have then the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's our whole life is tahzim and nabi how to, to spread the magnificent status and reality of Sayyidina Muhammad throughout the earth so that Allah Most High will be pleased with us. He says, you got it because you found me. I was a hidden treasure, I wanted to be known. Allah is known through who? It's through Muhammadun Rasulullah So we actually found Allah's reality by Tahzim and Nabi So it has immense blessings, immense blessings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, how can we introduce the Naqshbandi teachings to the family and in-laws? InshaAllah with a grain of salt. First make sure that you're strong onto it because they're probably going to attack you. So as soon as you, you learn something, make sure your connection is strong, your understanding is strong with the shaykhs, you're, you're, you're firm on your feet because you can't give what we don't have. So we try to gain it first, gain the connection, the understanding, the love for the shaykhs so that when we're firm, first they begin to observe the character. When they see your characters right, you're upright, you're, 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 you're controlling anger, you control all of these characteristics, then you can slowly start to say, oh, you know, I'm watching this shaykh on, on YouTube and share the channel, here's the website, here's the, the articles that they have. And you basically share the knowledge or on Facebook share the knowledge and share the links to your friends. You don't have to post your own haqqaiq, just share theirs because once People copy and paste things and, and, and spread it and they don't really truly understand it and become something different. But take the articles that are already being posted and share them and that's a big khidmat. Because that imagine if they're sharing to 10 people and 10 people sharing to 10 people already went to 100 people in one shot. And that has an immense amount of reality that if everybody shared it to 10 people how fast that article would go out. But if you want to just clip and paste your own two, three words that really don't make any sense and put that out as if you have an article now, you're diluting the whole ability. If you take the actual article of the shaykh and, dil and spread that, then yeah that, that has an immense blessing, immense blessing. As Salaamu uh, Sayyidi, how can we make our salah more effective? I'm from Ghana. Hey Salaamu Alaikum Ghana, how are you? <laughs> Inshaallah that's again all the teaching. Everything is based on energy. How can we pray if we have no energy? Salah is, uh, is all based on your energy. It's not based on your mind, it's based on the ability and the energy you have that as soon as you say, Allahu Akbar, do you feel yourself moving into the Divinely Presence? If you're not feeling anything and your salah is just, I'm um, in my mind making salah, that's not a real salah, that's just an imitated salah. That's why in your tahiyyat Allah asked you to say, As Salaamu Alaika Yuhan Nabi. Did you see Prophet As Salaamu Alaika Yuhan Nabi that in present tense I'm giving salams to Prophet No, if you didn't see then your salah didn't work. So it's just imitated salah. 
So until you build your energy, and that's why they talk with energy because how are you going to say build your salah? Build your salah, what does it mean? But build your, your qutra and your energy that do your meditation, do your practices, make the connection, make the connection until you feel an overwhelming flow of energy that when you say, Allahu Akbar, you meditated and practiced all the time your meditation. So then you visualize yourself at Kaaba and is right there in front of you. You're actually on Hajj in the presence of the Kaaba. You think you're seeing it by your imagination? No. Your imagination is under Allah's authority. You can only see Disneyland. That came in your basic package. Even in Ghana they have a package where you can only see Mickey Mouse and Disneyland. But to see the Kaaba and nice and crisp and clear, see yourself in Medina praying that you want to pray behind Prophet in Medina to Munawwara. When your energy and your practices for tafakkur and ask the, the, the shaykhs to be present with you, dress me from your presence, dress me from your light, that I want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Allahu Akbar. As soon as they enter in, they practice all their life, they become Ahlul Basira, where they direct their heart, they see. Now if they're seeing it, that prayer is a hundred times more powerful than the one that was just thinking it. They begin to reach a state of real salah in which they are praying with their soul into the oceans of light. And when they pray with their soul in the ocean of light, they feel the energy of lights as soon as they give their… their when you say, Allahu Akbar is that Allah is supreme and the reason you say, Allahu Akbar is that you're asking that Allah open the reality of your ears because your soul leaves through the ears. It hears the sound and travels from the ear. As soon as you say, Allahu Akbar, you opened a veil from the ear and the soul went into the Divine, the Presence faster than the speed of thought. Faster than the speed of thought the soul is in that ocean. If it can visualize itself in Mecca, if it can visualize itself in Medina, later on Allah will open into horizons in the world of light in which it sees itself in the world of light praying in that ocean of light. That becomes based all on tafakkur and contemplation, meditation, making the noble connection. Without the energy we're doing nothing, everything is just imitated. Sayyidi, why do I feel that when I'm moving forward by one step in this path, I'm pushed back by two steps? Because every step we move forward there's two more shaitans coming. Someone asked, oh shaykh I'm, I started making zikr and have all these horrible desires are coming. And again the understanding is that when it's a football game, soccer, when you're on shaitan's team everything's okay, you're okay with, he's good with you, you're good with him. You got no problems. <laughs> as soon as you decided, no I'm, I want to be on Rahman's team, all of their linebackers, all, <laughs> all of their people just looked at you that, how'd you leave our team? All these years you were with us. Say, sorry I had an awakening, <laughs> Allah's grant, I was on the wrong team. Now you come over to a Rahman's team, did you think? that it was just going to be easy? No, shaitan is now very angry. So now send the big linebackers to hit that one and take him out of the game. He shouldn't have left my, my team to go on Allah's team. And if you practice what they're teaching you to practice, do your practices, do your energy, it's as if you're patting yourself and Allah providing you now linebackers in the game. Because they know that you're weak and now these guys are coming after you. So as soon as you do your madad, do your practices, do your awrads, it's as if Allah is signing two big ones that go and guard this one who's coming in new. And that's why this whole system of tafakkur and building the energy, building the practices, 
so that they can buffer all of these attacks that they know shaitan is going to now be coming after you. Of course you're going to do the zikr and now your family goes upside down, everybody start to scream, every type of emotion is happening, every type of hawa and desire is coming. Why shaitan wants you to sit in the masjid and do your zikr? Or no, he put every type of nasty thought, click here, click there, look at this, look at that, right? To stop your process of building yourself and come back into his entertainment world, come back onto my team. <laughs> we pray Allah Auzubillah <laughs> that Allah's ni'mah and rahmah, if we knew how much shaitan was really after us and how much Allah's rahmah and mercy for us, the how much He sends support, how much He rigs the game in our favour. Again we fall it's one time, as soon as we do good it's ten goods. So everything is, is geared for our success, Allah's infinite rahmah and mercy be upon us and all we have to do is, is do the system that they're teaching and keep that love and all of a sudden you feel this madad and support and you begin to bulls bulldoze through these difficulties inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.